Hi, all right, welcome to McGrathematics. Today we are doing a quick video lesson to start you off on your next topic, which is called rates and ratios. So if you have a maths book or something handy to uh, write some notes down, that would be the heading for our new topic starting today. We're gonna to kick off this topic with a lesson on just an introduction to what ratios are and a couple of important skills involving ratios. Okay, so to start us off, we're gonna talk about just what a ratio is with an example. So let's say uh, every time I gave Lachlan two apples, I was also going to give Henry five apples. Okay, every time Lachlan gets two, Henry gets five. So for example, if I gave Lachlan four, I would need to give Henry 10 apples. So the question to start us off is, uh, if I ended up giving Lachlan 10 apples instead of two, how many apples would I need to give to Henry to keep this ratio of two to five? Okay, for every two Lachlan gets, Henry gets five. If I'm gonna give Lachlan 10, how many would I need to give Henry? Well, let's think, this ratio of two apples, I'm essentially doing this five times, aren't I? One, two, three, four, five. So if I'm giving Lachlan his share of apples five times, that means I need to give Henry his share of apples also five times. So we've done five lots of two here, so we've got to do five lots of five on the other side to get our answer of 25. Okay, so a ratio of two to five would be the same thing as a ratio of 10 to 25. And that's what ratios are essentially. They're just proportions uh, with two parts. Let's do another quick example. Let's say in a math class, we had eight boys and 12 girls. So in total, we have 20 students. If we were looking at the ratio of boys to girls in this class, it would be a ratio of eight to 12. However, we can write this same uh, ratio in a simpler way or with smaller numbers at least. A simpler way of writing a ratio of eight to 12 would be saying two to three. The reason we know this is because eight is two lots of four and 12 is three lots of four. So we've got two fours to three fours. So we just write that as two to three. So the way we simplified this ratio is we're looking for a number that multiplies into both sides, and then we're essentially going to divide by that number. Another example, we could have the ratio of girls to students in total. That would be 12 girls to 20 students in total. Again, we can write this ratio in a simpler way with smaller numbers. Now, again, we can look at fours and we can say that 12 is gonna be three lots of four, and we can say 20 is going to be five lots of four. So we can simplify this ratio to three parts to five parts instead of 12 to 20. It says the exact same thing, but with simpler numbers that are easier to comprehend. And that's why we call it a simplified ratio. All right, sweet. Let's have a go at some more practice questions for what are called equivalent ratios. So that's saying the same thing with different numbers. So if you think you know what you're doing already, you can pause the video and have a think about what these four spaces are gonna be in these four questions. But if you're not confident yet, that's all right. I'm gonna go through them uh, in just a sec. So for the first one, we have a ratio of two to five is equal to something to 15. So the parts that are matching up are the five and the 15. And we're saying to ourselves, we're always thinking in terms of multiplication for ratios, okay? We're thinking to ourselves, what number can you multiply five by that turns it into 15. If you're thinking times three, that's absolutely correct. So this ratio on the left-hand side is being multiplied by three to get to the other side of the equal sign. So if we're multiplying five by three, we'll also do two multiplied by three and get our answer of six. So two to five and six to 15 is the same thing. And so these two dots in the middle, they basically just mean two. This is six to 15. Okay, for question B, we're gonna apply the same logic. We're going to say three to four is equal to 21 to something. So we're gonna say, well, three is turning into 21. So what times three gets you an answer of 21? The answer is seven. So if we're multiplying this part by seven, we should also multiply this part by seven and do four times seven to get our gap here of 28. Third one, same thing again. We have two matching parts are the six and the 30. So we're thinking what number multiplies by six and gets us 30 as an answer. This one's gonna be five. So the left-hand ratio is being multiplied by five. So we'll do 11 times five to fill in the gap and we'll get 55. 
And for the last one, we have a triple ratio. We've got three parts, three to one to 10. So this might be three people getting shares of some money or whatever it could be. Now the part we have matching up is the first part, which matches up with the three. So three is turning into 12. What are you multiplying three by that turns it into 12? Well, the answer is four. So we're going to multiply the other two parts by four as well. So one times four is four, and then 10 times four is 40. And there are our equivalent ratios filled in. And one more important skill for today's lesson is the idea of simplifying ratios, which is writing the ratio, saying the same information with smaller and simpler numbers. So if you wanna have a go by pausing this video and trying yourself first, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, I'm gonna go through them now. So for the first one, we have a ratio of 10 parts to 20 parts. Well, a simpler way of saying that is every time the left-hand side gets one lot of 10, this other side gets two lots of 10. So we can simplify this and just say this is a ratio of one to two. Or you can think we're just crossing off a zero from both sides because we're dividing both sides by 10, whatever works for you. Okay, for the second one, we've got 24 to 40. Now, a good place to start with simplifying ratios if you're not super confident with your multiplication is you can just cut both sides in half. So half of 24 is 12 and half of 40 is 20. Now, we haven't fully simplified the ratio. We can keep going further, but we're on the path towards our answer now. We can take both sides of this ratio and we can cut them in half again. We can go half of 12 is six and then half of 20 is 10. And then we can even go one more time because these two numbers are both even, so they can be cut in half one last time and we'll get three to five. Okay, so three to five is the simplified version of 24 to 40. If you were super, super switched on, you could have got there in one step by saying, oh, well, because I'm so good at my times tables, I know 24 is three times eight and I know 40 is five times eight. So this is three eighths to five eighths, so it's three to five. That's how you can get there in one step. All right, and that's how we're going to try and do the next one for question C. We're trying to think of a number that multiplies into both 15 and into 35. Can you think of it? If you're saying five right now, you are on the money. Five multiplies into both numbers. 15 is going to be three lots of five. And 35 is going to be seven lots of five. So we've got three fives here. We've got seven fives here. So we can simplify this by dividing by five and we'll get three to seven three fives to seven fives, three to seven. Question D is a similar idea, except again, we have a three part ratio. So this one's a bit trickier because we are trying to find a number that multiplies into nine, into 27 and into 18. Again, if you are switched on with your times tables or you might have a times tables chart nearby that can help you, uh, you'll recognize that nine is a multiple, oh sorry, is a factor of all three of these numbers. This first one is one lot of nine, 27 is three lots of nine and 18 is two lots of nine. So we'll divide them all by nine and we get one to three to two as our simplified ratio. Now for the last two, we've got some units. Now a simplified ratio should not have any units uh, in your answer. So first thing we're going to do is we're gonna write both sides of the ratio of the double dot in the same units. So the left-hand side is $2, the right-hand side is 40 cents. We're instead going to write the left-hand side, which is $2. We're going to write that as 200 cents. So left-hand side is 200 and the right-hand side is 40. Now we're going to simplify this ratio. Uh, we can take a zero off both sides by dividing by 10. And now we can say to ourselves, well, we'll cut in half once more and half of 20 is 10, half of four is two. And we can do that trick one more time, half both sides and we get a finalized ratio of five to one. So well done if you got any three of these answers, but extra well done if you got five to one as your final answer. Our one last example, we have 600 meters on the left as a ratio to three kilometers. Again, we're gonna write both sides in the same units. We're going to write three kilometers as 3000 meters. Now we're gonna try and simplify the numbers as best we can. We can take two zeros off both sides by dividing by hundred. So we get six to 30. And now we can say to ourselves, well, this is one six and 30 is five lots of six. So this is a ratio of one to five, fully simplified. 
Okay, if you need any more examples or if any of those weren't super clear and you would like some more help, um, feel free to email me or send me a message. Uh, there'll be some practice questions for you to try uploaded on Google Classroom uh, for you to upload photos of your work. All right, thanks so much if you watch this and I'll catch you guys in the next lesson. Cheers.